So today I want to uh, tell you a little story. It still is not complete uh, by any means, but I think uh, the absolute uh, bones of it are correct. And it's quite a remarkable story simply because of its complete analogy uh, to the expanding universe of cosmology. And, uh, and that is, has come about because one has been able to ask really fundamental questions about genomes. Uh, of course, as you know now, we've got a lot of genome sequences, we've got a lot of computer programs that people buy, and they stick their sequence through this, and they come out with the standard conclusions of phylogenetic trees and so on. Uh, and of course, that has a lot of hidden assumptions behind it uh, before you can say uh, anything reasonable about this. So what I'm going to do today is to say, how can we get a picture of a whole genome in one grasp of it, rather than just, you know, uh, one million letters of uh, AGCT and then some uh, rather boring statements about how old the genes are in it. So what I want to now uh, deal with is a method, it is a method, of uh, looking at genomes and being able to tell whether they are at equilibrium. I think this is very important to be able to say this genome is at mutational equilibrium, right? It's reached the point, and that means that once it's at mutational equilibrium, it has no information from the past, uh, the single genome. On the other hand, if it's not at equilibrium, then I think one can do, uh, one can tell whether there is uh, information from the past. We get a set of curves that are essentially highly correlated. They have all sorts of bumps in between, but that doesn't matter. But essentially, they fall on a diagonal. Okay, so as the T increases here, the A increases in company with it. Okay, so the human genome is very, very far from equilibrium and therefore must contain information from the past. No doubt about it. And there's one very beautiful thing that I should finally add. Around about 400,000 years ago, uh, the two branches reading, leading from the most primitive vertebrate which is the shark family, a split. And one branch got out and went on land and gave rise to us. The other branch stayed in the ocean and gave rise to the huge variety of teleost fish. So basically we have traversed time in two different ways. And we can add, make that additive, if you like, and that is why I said we can look at over a billion years simply to see what the events have done. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'll be happy to answer any questions.